Well, good day everyone. Wanted to talk to you about a video that I put up yesterday talking about the reason why I exchange, I'm going to exchange my 8 gigabyte iMac mini to the 16 gigabyte one. Uh, and I'm going to sort of summarize at the end about performance, but I wanted to sort of go through a little bit about uh, some extra sort of discussion about this because I've been looking, researching it online, also talking to a lot of people that have been answering the video from yesterday. Uh, so I thought I'd go through a little bit more with, uh, with you all now. So the thing that I've got is one guy sent me an interesting article and I'll, I'll just click over and I'll show you this this question that he posted it says and it's from Flux Labs and thank you so much because he sent me a terminal command that I can use uh, to check uh, how much of swap disk is being used at the time and his message says the memory management on most BSB Unix Linux does not use more swap than typical Windows installations this is generally not a terrible thing but as you pointed out if used excessively, can place undue wear and tear on the system disk. If the OS just swaps out some part of the memory and isn't accessed often, then using the swap shouldn't cause too much harm. One good metric, though, is to keep an eye on the swap ins and swap outs in, in terminal. And I'll show you that in a minute using this VM stat from the OS terminal. If those metrics are high, then you could run into some SSD wear and tear issues down the road. And that's what is good to say. So this actually shows if the swap file is being used. Uh, because I think either way, uh, what happens is that... Um, each, even if I get the 16, it's probably still going to allocate the same amount of swap memory on the computer. I think that's just the way OS X works. So it's always going to grab part of the swap memory. But it doesn't mean it's actually going to use it. It just means that it's there sitting in reserve. But if it's being written to the whole time, that's where you'll have the issue of potential wear and tear on your SSD. Uh, and remember, there is only a limited number of times that it can write to that certain spot, which means eventually you'd start to use lose uh, space on that hard disk. So let's run a, a couple of tests. So uh, at the moment, I'll tell you what I've got open. I've got open, well, if we look over here, uh, these apps, if we look under the memory here, you can see that I've got open Lightroom Classic, Wirecast, Windows Server, Creative Cloud, and Safari. So they're all the apps that I've got open at this stage. Now I've got... Um, Lightroom open. Now I've used the A7R4 because they're obviously 40 odd megapixel file sizes. They're about 68 uh, megapixels for each file. Uh, so they're really um, quite large. And I'm going to export it to sort of show you the amount of RAM that will be used, etc. And, and I think that's a great way of actually doing it. Uh, so you can see at the moment, let me just switch over to this new um, program and it's called System that you can check. Uh, and it seems to work uh, great with the M1 Max. So you can see here that I've got eight gigabytes of memory uh, used at the moment. It does give you scales that you've got there as well. Uh, and it will show you your processor has been used at 36% and it also tells you your Macintosh uh, hard disk space uh, as well. Now this is great because it, it tells you everything that's open at the moment. It's showing that there's only 406 megabytes free of um, memory available at this stage and it tells you what's used in cache and wide etc so that's really good the way that this works so this is a great app because it, it uh, tells you everything that you need to know it even includes things like sensors if you're using the macbook airs and Pro, uh, macbook pros uh, it'll tell you the temperatures and the fan rate etc is all on this at the same time so it's a really good app now if i open up uh, iStat menus, uh, you can see here that at the moment it's it's using, it's got a swap file there listed at two gigabytes uh, and it's using 652 megabytes of that swap memory. So that's an important thing to remember. Actually, before this, when I did a test, it went up to five gigabytes, uh, the size of that swap file. So that might be an interesting thing to know. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Lightroom, uh, and this is very RAM intensive, uh, probably the most RAM intensive application that Adobe have, or that you'll probably have one of the ones that you'll ever use. So I've got 50 odd uh, images that I'm going to use here. Now, each file is around 62 megabytes in size. I'm exporting all of these uh, to JPEG. So they're high-res files. Like I said, they're Sony A7R4 files, and they're going to be uh, exported to JPEG full resolution. So I'm just going to go export with previous because I've already set this up. You can see they're, they're already there. Uh, and now I'm going to just say open. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste the command in uh, that will show me what the... Uh, 
how the system is actually running uh, and whether the swap file is being used. So the ones we have to look out for is the swap in, swap outs. That tells us uh, if the swap file is actually being used at that time. And you can see that it is. Now, if these numbers are high, and they certainly start out reasonably high, uh, that you can see that the that's being used the whole time. So with what I'm doing at the moment, the swap file is being used. Remember, any Mac will have that swap file there, but it doesn't mean that the swap file is being used. It's just that it's ready to be used used if it needs it but in this case it's actually being used and that could be a problem for this ssd in the future all right so what we'll do is we'll look now at iStat menus and see what swaps being used now you can see now that it's actually gone up to three gigabytes and it's using 1.96 there it's jumped up uh, in the usage as well so this is again proving that the swap file is being used at this moment now if we had more ram that would obviously be used less uh, than what it's actually using there so that's something just to keep in mind uh, as well now if we switch back over to this application you can see here now that we've got the eight gigabyte uh, memory it's still has, well it went then to 165 megabytes of free but basically it's all used uh, it's used the whole memory that's there as well uh, and you can also see if you look there the processes now is 86 percent and i think it jumps to 92 there that you can see uh, so the system really is being taxed by what i'm doing at this moment Okay, so let's summarize everything up here. Uh, I had comments about iPhones and iPads don't have any issues with the RAM and they don't seem to fail. Uh, yes, that may be true, but they're not being used like what you would use a Mac with really pushing everything that's in there, like the processors and the RAM and everything is, is pushed incredibly. Where particularly if you're doing high-end stuff like what I was doing with uh, using live streaming or streaming to a camera, plus using Lightroom at the same time. Uh, and so that's really pushing it. It did prove that the swap file is being used. And like I said, remember, the swap file will always be there, but it, that doesn't mean that it's actually being used. It just means that it's reserved there to be used. So it's going to be interesting to see how the 16 gigabyte compares to the 8 gigabyte uh, in that regard. So I think over the long term, you may uh, degrade the SSDs if you're using that swap file too much, and it's something to consider as well. Uh, Max Yurov did post a video this morning that I watched too, and he did prove in a couple of tests that the 16 gigabyte did make a big difference but what was amazing was the 8 gigabyte one really held its own in most of the tests so if you are doing normal type work or not too intensive the 8 gigabyte unit is going to be fine but I think if you want to future proof uh, your device and you really want to push it hard with these apps like Lightroom etc or Final Cut and things like that you, the 16 gigabyte is going to be a much better option uh, I'll have some more videos up soon about how the, the computer's going, setting it up, what apps work and things like that, uh, performance and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.